Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. People send me stories all the time that catch their attention, and one crossed my desk the other day, and I thought, well, this isn't quite complete. The story doesn't have enough to actually have an arc to it. I need a good arc to a story, you know, beginning, middle, end, of some sort, of some sort. So now it does. More people send it to me, so there you go. From Insider.com, Jake Epstein wrote it. An Ohio man allegedly rented a crane and used it to steal a 58-foot-long bridge from a public park. <laughs> people steal stuff, and you always wonder why. Sometimes you wonder why. An Ohio man's been accused of renting a crane and using it to steal a 58-foot-long bridge from a public park, local police said on Monday. The renting of the crane, which adds some color to the story, might also be one of the things that led to his downfall. Because I suspect when the 58-foot-long bridge disappeared, some people said, huh, that couldn't just be, you know, drunken college kids picking it up and carrying it away. Somebody must have used a crane to do that. Gee, how many people have cranes? Oh, you can rent a crane. Well, let's go visit the local rent-a-crane place and see what they say. Akron, Ohio police said that the 63-year-old man was arrested on Friday and charged with felony theft for allegedly stealing the bridge in November. The bridge was stolen a little while ago, but he's just arrested recently. The bridge had been installed in Middlebury Run Park, but was later moved and stored in a field during a wetland restoration project, police said. So the bridge was taken from its location and put someplace just to get it out of the way. And then it was from that spot that the bridge vanished on or before November 11th. Police said that, Brown, um, police said that the man who worked in the area paid a local trucking company to get access to a crane. He then used the crane to load the bridge onto a vehicle and drove it to a nearby property. Now, he was identified as a person of interest in the case after police said they received multiple tips in connection with the case and found the bridge partially disassembled while searching his property recently. Akron's municipal court confirmed insider that the man will be arraigned on the felony charge on December 23rd. No attorney for him was listed with the court. Now, I did find some other factoids elsewhere on the internet. Uh, one site reported that police officers conducted a search with a warrant at the property and said they found the bridge that was partially disassembled. So I know some people, when they heard that the police searched the property, are going to wonder if they had a warrant to do so. Apparently they did. Uh, and an investigation also shows that the theft of the bridge was actually done in phases beginning around November 3rd when the thieves or thief cleared the brush around the span and then removed all of the deck boards from the structure. So some pieces were removed from the bridge, the area around it was cleared, and then somebody came in and removed it. Now, I will point out that Middlebury Run Park, oftentimes in geography, a run is also a, a, another name for a creek, which is kind of interesting because I know of some signs along I-75 that point out to a place called Brent Run Creek, and a run is a creek. The creek is a run, so it's kind of redundant, but but it's one of those things over a period of time. It's adopted different usages and so on. So Middlebury Run Park, I suspect, has a creek flowing through it. I could be wrong. But, you know, we talk about the things people steal and why. I'm not sure why you'd want a 58-foot-long bridge unless you were planning on scrapping it. But stealing a bridge and scrapping it would have to be difficult, especially if word got out about the bridge and photographs, and if people knew what it looked like, a scrapper might look at it and go, gee, dude, where'd you get the bridge that you're trying to sell me for scrap? But people do steal weird stuff. And a lot of times people steal stuff because it's an opportunity, and they think, hey, it's easy to do, and they don't worry that much about the downside. Uh, there is a sculptor in Michigan, he passed away a few years ago, Marshall Fredericks. Marshall Fredericks did a bunch of sculptures that people in Michigan will know about. If you ever go to the Detroit Zoo, there's a bunch of sculptures of animals that he did. But if you go to downtown Detroit, there's a statue called the Spirit of Detroit. And it shows a figure holding the sun in one hand and people in the other hand. And it's the Spirit of Detroit statue. It's very, very well known. It's one of the most well-known images of Detroit. Uh, and so Marshall Fredericks is a very, very well-known sculptor. And uh, quite a while ago, uh, a mall commissioned him to make a sculpture for them to be like the centerpiece of one of their main uh, lobby areas. And the sculpture he made for them was of a lion and a mouse. And we all know the story about the lion who gets the thing in his paw and the mouse pulls it out. And he thought, well, that's, that's, a, that's a touching story. And so he makes a sculpture of the lion and this little mouse, little mouse. And the little mouse is part of the sculpture, but 
this, the mouse was a separate piece of the sculpture. And now the lion was oversized and so was the mouse. But I think the mouse is about that big. I could be off by a few inches, but about that big. And the thing about the mouse is the mouse is really cool looking because the mouse is standing up on his hind legs and, he's, and he's, he's reaching up to the lion. And it's a very interesting looking mouse sculpture. And every few years, somebody would steal it. Now, you couldn't steal the lion because the lion was too big and heavy and you couldn't put him in your pocket or underneath your coat and walk out of the building with him. But people would come by and jimmy the mouse and get the mouse loose and take off with the mouse. And what's weird about it is that while Marshall Fredericks is still alive, he would send them a new mouse to replace the one that got stolen because he apparently, I think he cast these. Uh, and so he had replacement mice standing by. And so, I don't know if you go to his website, they actually sell things, and one of the things you can buy is a replica of that mouse. I'm not sure if it's the correct size or not. But I remember hearing a story about the mall shutting down. And there was stories of people telling stories about when they visited the mall and the memories they had of the mall and all this stuff. And people forget that we have these mega malls now. But there was a time when even just a small indoor mall was a big deal, you know, anchored at one end by Sears and J.C. Penney and like Hudson's, if you're from Michigan. Uh, that would be a mall you go spend the afternoon there. It's a big, big deal, especially if you're a teenager. Uh, and so I remember reading these articles about the mall shutting down and somebody actually apparently contacted the mall and apologized. And I'm really, really sorry. But when I was a young kid and just kind of a goof off, I, I stole the mouse and sent the mouse back. And the problem, of course, is the mouse has been stolen more than once, I believe. I believe. I could be getting some of these stories wrong, but <laughs> I love Marshall Frederick's sculptures. I just love them. And uh, I've always been intrigued by that story. I, I, I love the sculpture of the mouse and the lion. But the fact that people come by and steal the mouse, so sad. Because then other people come by and go, hey, there's a sculpture of a lion. What's that all about? Well, it makes more sense if you realize the, the lion is actually looking down and the mouse is reaching up to him. That's a very, very cool image. So why people would steal it? Well, it, because they could. <laughs> and it was something that could be done. And it's a cool looking mouse, you know. But the sad part is if you steal it, other people can't enjoy it. As for why the man is stealing a 58-foot long bridge, um, my first guess would be scrap. My first guess. My second guess would be that perhaps the guy had a piece of property where he thought, yeah, I could use a bridge out here. And if the property is secluded enough, maybe nobody would figure that out for a while. But, of course, they figured it out. And like I said, it's, it's going to be difficult to remove a bridge that requires a crane to move it and then move that bridge to your property using a rented truck, I think, and just trying to figure all this stuff out. It sounds like a lot of logistics went into this. It'd be hard to hide if you're trying to do this without getting caught, which most people do try to do things like this without getting caught. So <laughs> I'll follow up on this to see if the man takes a plea or not or if he goes to trial, and if so, what happens there? But it's a crazy story. Jake Epstein wrote it for Insider.com. An Ohio man allegedly rented a crane and used it to steal a 58-foot-long bridge from a public park. Stole it last month. Will be arraigned this month. That's how things go. Fox 8 uh, ran the story also. And it was sent to me by Josh, George, Graham, Keith, Karen, Jeff, Joe, and Jeffrey. Not to be confused with Jeff. Two different people, my friends. <laughs> Two different people. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Climb the mountain so you can see the world, not so the world can see you.